I have for many years, and in my book I talk about the importance of picking uh, powerful, perfect words. And it's all part of this system I mentioned that I call um, creating the language of your case. And it involves those three steps I want to touch on, which is picking perfect, powerful words. Uh, it involves what I call resurrecting recognizable phrases and, and picking winning questions to frame things out. And I want to talk to you about each of those. Um, and all of that I call winning before beginning. And the reason I do is because the pressure's not on. The pressure's not on. In the courtroom's a pressure cooker. We're reacting on the, on the spot. If we've done it forever, our instincts may be good and we react most of the time right. If we're newer, you know, it's more stressful. But to everybody, the courtroom's a pressure cooker. What I'm advocating is you, using these principles of what I call creating the language of your case, it's a thing of beauty because you're not in court. There's no lights on. There's no pressure. You have no mistakes get made. You can talk to it about people. Run it around. Think about it. Go, oh my gosh, that word may backfire. That analogy doesn't work. There's this time to really work it around, and it's fun. It's just fun working it. You grab your thesaurus and try to check, and I'm going to talk about kind of the, some methodology here to go with it, the whys behind it, but we don't, we don't come to courtrooms with wheelbarrows and two-by-fours. We're our, what we construct with are words. That is our medium. And they're powerful. And we all tend to think as lawyers, I open my mouth and these wonderful words are going to come off my silver tongue. And look, for most of us, they probably do most of the time. But if you take the time of making it a part of the science of pre-trial, on the, not every word, for goodness sake, you can't sit on every word and try to figure it out. You'll never get a word out of your mouth. I'm talking about the fundamental pivotal words that are going to either frame an issue or frame your case out. The structure of your case, type words and questions, if you really think about them, you build, you come out of opening and hopefully you're winning at the beginning and you've got this craft you built that can take that momentum and look, things don't happen perfect at trial. But if you build it right, it's, it's so less vulnerable to being sunk. Because A, you shrunk it down and don't give them as many targets to shoot at, but B, you built it in this rock solid architectural thing of beauty and the architectural elements happen to be these words you picked. So I wanna go through that, that and here's a, I can't, I'm gonna have to read this because I, if someone said you need to be an actor, I could say if you tell me what's the point you want in this scene, I could get it across. If you said you got to say these words and memorize them, I'd be fired immediately. I cannot memorize the quotes. I wish I could. Every time I go to use a quote in trial, I either got to write it or I chicken out and skip it. So I'm going to read it because it made the point. I just happened to have seen this movie and it was such a, really made this point about the importance of the, the power of the, the language when used as really as something to advance your cause. And the, it was the movie The Darkest Hour, which was the Churchill movie, very good movie, by the way. And they were, it was all really coming to vote in, in Parliament about whether they were going to go to war or whether they were going to try to work peace talks, which really amounted to a surrender. And there's some guy, and I'm not a big history guy, but it's Viscount Halifax. And he was on the side of, by guy, we got to have peace talks. And the guy playing Churchill, Gary Oldham, did a, won the Academy Awards, fabulous. But he got up and rallied them in this speech and he got it, everyone voted for it and they were going to defend themselves and go to war. And the scene that touched me afterwards, I grabbed a pen as soon as he said it, was one of the other sympathizers of Halifax asked, what just happened? And Halifax said, he just mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. He just mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. And I went, damn. You know, I've been, this is like what I've been, such a central part of what I believe in and tried to pass on. So that's the basic thing. And here's, the, I'm going to give you the process, and then I want to give you a little revelation I have. Um, the, the process works like this. 